the fascinating thing about coaching is that you have to trouble the comfortable and comfort the troubled rick charlesworth rick is the former australian national women's hockey coach and to me this quote sort of summarizes what coaching is all about hello and welcome to abracadabra my podcast about things that fascinate me today i have once again invited author wd kelpak the third aka bill kelpak to talk about his experience as a coach bill is an award winning and critically acclaimed internationally published writer he is a communication professor and a nationally recognized wrestling coach he was born in salt lake city utah where he continues to live coach and teach today let's talk to bill about coaching bill welcome back well thank you thanks for having me well bill i'm so delighted to have you back i have utmost respect for coaches you know sports sports coaches assist athletes in developing their full potential i mean they are responsible for training athletes in a sport by analyzing their performances uh, instructing in relevant skills and by providing all the encouragement that athletes and sportsmen need uh, but they are also responsible for the guidance of the athlete in life and their chosen sport uh, so when a team wins a match or let's say a tournament when an athlete gives a record breaking performance i mean there is always a competent coach behind them and uh, coaches deserve our utmost respect that is why i wanted to dedicate an entire episode just about coaching uh, well i'm really curious to know about your journey as a coach your experience uh, please tell the listener everything about uh, your journey as a coach okay well um my dad was a wrestling coach and uh he and and Jeff Wonderland uh started a wrestling club called uh Sundance Wrestling Club and the first 3 world champions in wrestling came from Sundance and there have now been 4 but uh the first 3 were coached by my dad and Jeff wow and one of the things there is that it was just expected that when you hit a certain age as a wrestler that you would you would start helping coach kids and so i was i actually started coaching young wrestlers when i was about 12 and that uh that's really where it started and then uh, i was away from wrestling for a number of years and then when my oldest son was going to turn 4 then i started coaching wrestling again right i mean a, a fascinating journey you know to see such a great man in your family your your father being a coach and uh, you looking up to him all the time uh, so tell me something bill is that a normal trajectory for for a sportsman you know to to become a coach so to speak if they are good at their sport is it necessarily that necessary that they'll also be good coaches No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if if you were it it does not follow that you might have been an amazing athlete in your sport that that will make you an amazing coach. It does not follow. I have had several assistant coaches who uh you know that were very successful as athletes that just making that being able to bridge from doing it to being able to teach it just really wasn't possible um on the other hand i have had coaches who did pretty well who never wrestled and that to me blows my mind but in those you know there were two cases of that and in that case the dads were learning right along with their kids and they just got to the point where they said you know i think i can coach the young ones and i kind of uh mentored him for a little while and then i was like yeah you're right you can handle that go uh go do that and at one point at the peak of the freestyle and greco roman program that uh i started at our peak we had 113 wrestlers and i needed the help so they were willing to step up and uh but yeah that connection between performance and being able to break it down into steps so that you can teach the moves you that is not automatic 
Mm. I think that's uh, I can also relate to that a corporate a good salesman may not be a good uh, you know team leader or a manager. Uh so it requires a uh, different skill sets to be a coach and to be a leader. So let's quickly talk about those key skill sets that uh, one needs, you know, as a coach. Well, one is that you if if you're going to run a program, then you have to be able you have to be organized. You have to be able to deal with all of that back end stuff that nobody talks about. The I don't remember any of my coaches talking to me as an athlete about a lot of the back room uh operational stuff and so I had to learn that on the fly my dad was uh my assistant coach for a number of years and so he was able to really help me learn that uh because with Sundance my dad was the one who handled most of that operational stuff also and then he uh it was more of a a 50-50 with he and I than it was there and he really taught me a lot of those types of things in terms of the operations and then in terms of the being able to run practice there uh I took a very academic approach to it one is that my goal is that every kid I coach is a technician and the way that I look at it is that you know you can get out there and and have an opponent where you're just as strong as he is just as fast as he is just as well conditioned as he is but in the end if all those things are equal the one who wins is the one who does it right and so that is my goal in terms of of the kids i coach does everybody become a technician no but a lot of them are very technical wrestlers that i coach right true and uh, so two parts of the questions uh, uh, from linkedin have been answered the questions were asked by ananya first was uh, can a good athlete become a coach you've answered that and of course the key skills required by an athlete you've also answered that so i'm taking another question from linkedin i've i've uh, sent a few invites to people uh, although you know it will be later posted on spotify and other uh, portals but i've just sent an invite so i'm just talking to these guys on linkedin as we are talking so i'm i'm going to take another question and somebody wants to know who's your favorite coach apart from your father and uh, you know uh, why do you look up to that person well i was lucky enough that my parents as an athlete my parents literally mortgaged their future they took out a second mortgage on the home to fund my wrestling and so i have wrestled with olympians and uh i have beaten olympians i was i was at a very high level i qualified for international competition in greco roman and i've wrestled four world champions and i beat three of them however wow. it's got to you got to be i had a window and when i made the pan am team and then i got hurt and didn't get to go and the guy who went in my place got a silver he lost 4 to 2 and uh at the trials i i teched him i meant i got a 12 point lead they just stopped the match that doesn't mean that i would have won because styles have to match up right but that does haunt me So that same year that that happened um I went to Dan Gable's intensive training camp and at at the University of Iowa and Dan Gable in my opinion is the greatest wrestler of all time I also think he's the greatest coach and when I was at that camp um most of the technicians and counselors were from the 84 Olymp- US Olympic team and so I I literally was was uh wrestling with them on a daily basis. And one of the things that happened there is again I got hurt uh the injury with the Pan Am team was a was re-injuring uh a previous injury. But Dan Gable got hurt also and so he and I spent about a week and a half going to physical therapy at the same time and we would be right next to each other and all we did for that week and a half was 3 to 4 hours a day was talk wrestling and talk coaching and it really 
that to me, I got much more out of that experience talking to Dan Gable than I did from any of the, the things that, uh, that they were trying to teach in terms of technique. Right. Uh, you know, it, I, I'm sure it was an honor to uh, train directly under Dan Gable. Uh, you know, I, I, I just recall this. I was reading about Dan Gable a while earlier and uh, he had a traumatic event uh, uh, when he was pretty young. Uh, he lost his sister. We're not going to talk about the specifics about how he lost her. But then, you know, that was a big trauma and a big loss that he had suffered. And he did not uh, let that affect his wrestling. And in fact, he used it as a reason to train and uh, and train with even more determination. Uh, so have you sort of come across any of your students as a coach? Uh, you know, have you coached somebody who's gone through that trauma? Because I think sports is a big motivation. And uh, a coach can actually use those same traumatic events in a very positive manner. The experiences and the pain can be actually channeled quite well through something uh, as competitive as wrestling. Have you come across somebody like that? I haven't as far as, you know, deaths in the family, not. But one of the things that I have seen a lot is uh, I've had wrestlers whose parents were going through divorce and some of the events that are more uh, social like that is a, I'm sorry about that. I, my, uh, my grandson is here and <laughs> he is no three, problem. and uh, the door is closed, however. <laughs> so, uh, Don't worry. yeah. One of the things with that is that I, you know, I've had parents say, well, with all this stuff going on, should we pull him out? And I have told them directly that, no, that if you know that this there's a risk of sounding unsportsmanlike but if there is a time to uh if there's a place where venting those types of feelings a wrestling mat's a perfect place for that and so i've had uh wrestlers who were going through those types of events that uh some of them those were the years that they had the uh you know, some of their best seasons was because they had all this extra, oh, I don't want to say anger, but all of this other emotion that they were just channeling in into their matches. Yeah, I and, think emotion would be the right word. Yeah, and so yeah. I've, I've, I have seen that, um, but I haven't, gratefully, I haven't had uh, as much of, of the other However, I have had a couple of my wrestlers who ended up in uh, situations that they lost their lives. And today was one of those days. I spoke at one of my wrestlers' uh, funeral services this morning. It's a huge honor to be asked to do that, but it is very, very difficult. And uh, you just, as a coach, you, you spend so much time with these kids that having those types of things, uh, it, it, it's, it's very, it's a tough go just yeah. straight up. And I hope that I, uh, helped their family and the parents, uh, along and in, in terms of dealing with, with that loss. But that is one of those things that, uh, it does stick with you. I, I'm sure it'll be with me for the rest of my life that uh, those two times I've done that. Right, true. Uh, God bless his soul, uh, you know, um, and uh, may God bless family with all the strength. Uh, this must be a difficult time, I'm sure, for you and more so for the family as well. Should we do it today, today or if it's okay, we can do it sometime later. Would that be okay? We can stop no, the recording. It, it's okay to, to keep going. The, yeah. Unless there's too much background noise. No, no, no. I love background noises. Uh, I don't have a big <laughs> setup. I love, I've, I love these uh, small special effects, as I call them, audio effects. <laughs> in my case, okay, uh, Bill. I am curious to know about, uh, you know, one of those uh, moments that we call, you know, those, those wow moments. So, uh, can you think of a wow moment from your coaching career and uh, share it with us? Well, I, like my dad, I was a, a dad coach also. And so all five of my kids wrestled. I had three girls and two boys. 
And uh, there are moments with each of my kids that really stand out. My oldest son, uh, there's a tournament called the Reno World Championships, and uh, it's the largest folk style tournament in the country. And my oldest son was the first Utah to receive Outstanding Wrestler for his age division there. And that tournament stands out to me for one thing, because we'd been going to it for a while. And for a number of years, one round before meddling, he would get beat out. And it, it, it was happening for a number of years. So this year, uh, things were going well. And then there was a moment where he was wrestling this kid from Iowa, who uh, I was very well aware of. And uh, the kid, when I saw that my son had him next, I was like, oh, crap, because he had pinned every opponent to get there. So now I'm in the corner and he's got this kid and my son uh, got the first takedown and then was going to do a three quarter stack. But one of the ways to defend that is to stand up. So the kid stood up and my son didn't let go. He just kept pulling on, on the kid's neck until finally uh, the kid just went. He went straight from his feet to being basically rolled up in a ball stacked on his shoulders and so my son pinned him in like 20 seconds and I jumped out of my chair I was so uh it was just such a great moment I jumped out of my chair and in front of there's about 3200 wrestlers so you know in the stands there's might be you know 10,000 people and I ripped out my pants <laughs> I I just jumped up and cheered and and uh, I guess I did some little uh, movements while I was in the air and did that. And that's how the rest of the tournament went, that he was wrestling all these guys that, that we knew, that we had seen before, that he had never wrestled before because he finally got his growth spurt. And so uh, he went through and pinned everybody until the finals and then uh, he won his match in the finals and when they announced the time for the most pins in the least time I had actually added up his time wrong so I thought he didn't get it and then when they announced his name it was just another one of those moments where it uh, I literally went down to a knee it, it just took the the strength out of my legs and I went down to a knee and uh, I was just so proud that I, I started to cry. But I, I, I'm just imagining the moment when you when you did that. I mean, truly a magical moment, you know, for you as a father, for you as a coach. Uh, truly, I think that is the highlight of your career. I mean, that is a moment that you would always remember. And as I call it, the wow moment. Uh, you would truly remember that for your <laughs> for your life. Thank you for sharing with us. Right. Uh, Bill, they say that generally there are three accepted styles of coaching, you know, in sports. It's a autocratic type, there is the democratic type coach, and there is the one we call the holistic coach. Uh, so how would you define your style, you know, as a coach? Probably a little bit of all three. That one of the things is I do try to structure my practices to where you you never stop. That when you when we are doing uh, warm up drills, I try to keep them moving. I try to never let it have a moment where it stops. That we have to stop when we're doing instruction, but then when we start doing live wrestling and conditioning after again, I try to keep it moving. And one of those things just sort of developed over time in terms of dealing with attention spans. You know, with kids, some of them, they just can't focus. And so if you keep them busy, then you can do that. And then also I try to sort of trick them into conditioning. That conditioning is, is not fun. And if I can turn it into a game, then that is much more successful. And the thing is, is that if, it, if you're having fun doing it, then you don't know that uh, you're getting that tired. And then there are 
uh, it's almost like nowadays in in the old days, then coaches viewed part of their job was to to make a man out of you and to get you to man up and and uh, there's a lot of that that just really it was certainly not a focus now, but you it's almost like it, it, to be a good coach you have to have a psychology degree and figuring out how to motivate these kids they it uh, every one of them is different and you have to figure them out what makes them tick what what keeps them going and if you've coached them a long time like my kids they they started wrestling at four then you'll figure them out and then it stops working and you have to figure them out again yeah. and so there's those things in terms of success on the mat, but then also one of the big things, it's, it's a game and what our games supposed to teach. They're supposed to teach you life lessons. True. And so how can, you know, how to behave as, as, uh, as an adult. And so one of the things that I also stress is sportsmanship and wrestlers from my program, uh, they are known all over the country that win or lose, they will shake the other coach's hand. And I will do that. Uh, also, I will go shake the other coach's hand. Um, and sometimes it's really hard. One of my daughters was wrestling a kid who was just, sometimes you run into people who are just dirty wrestlers. And in this case, they were young enough that it was taught. This kid didn't just do this stuff on his own. And so he was, uh, my daughter was just bawling her head off because this kid kept doing all this stuff that uh, shouldn't have been allowed. And we had a referee who was weak and, and allowed it. And then I was not going to shake the kid's hand or the other coach's hand because of the behavior. I just wasn't going to do it. But then she did. And I had this moment that was, it's like she's doing the right thing and how can I not? And so then I went and shook the kid's hand and the other coach's hand. And when we were leaving the mat, it was so extreme that a crowd gathered to see what was happening because it was, I was, you know, yelling about what was happening and all that. And then I had all these other coaches. I'm walking off the mat. My daughter's still crying. She was and walking off the mat and they're whispering to me, you're a better man than I am. No. Oh. And you know, and I, and I responded to some of them. I said, no, she's a better man than I am. <laughs> truly, truly. I think, uh, you know, uh, winning and losing is very important in sports. Of course, that's the why, you know, that's the reason we all play a game, you know. Uh, so winning and losing are part of it. But then who's got the bigger heart at the end of the day is what matters. And I think your daughter has proved that aptly. Uh, I, I think that's a, another proud moment for you there. Yeah, it... it uh... I can't, I can't disagree with that. It was one of those moments. And one of those coaches who watched this happen, I saw him for years. He was actually from New Mexico, but at the big tournaments, I, I'd see him for years. And he would ask about her every time I saw him. And, oh. you know, wanting to know what was going on in her life and so on and so forth. And, and uh, you know, in those moments where he was just so amazed by her behavior, that it stuck with him about as much as it stuck with me. And that, again, you're right. It's, it's a proud moment. You're right. True. You know, as a communication coach, as a communication trainer, I always tell people, people will forget your face, but they'll remember your emotions, be it anger, be it smile or, or happiness that you've shared with people. People actually remember emotions. They'll remember, they won't remember your face. Probably they won't even remember your name, but they would surely remember the emotion that emotions that you've shared with them and truly those are the experiences that we all remember uh, thank you for sharing that bill uh, let's quickly talk about you know and and I, I was really curious about when i was reading about the styles of coaching and styles of leadership obviously uh, they are all same uh, so let's quickly talk about holistic coaching you know it says that it's a style of coaching wherein uh, it theorizes that a happy team naturally becomes a successful team uh, so, you know, there has to be a limit wherein a coach has to draw a limit uh, wherein, you know, he can push the athletes so much 
so when we talk about holistic coaching it, it talks about the happiness of the team so do you think at times uh, you know coaches has sort of have to choose between happiness of the athlete and the team uh, vis-a-vis the performance and the way he's pushing them well yeah that one of the things like when i talked about tricking the kids into into the, doing their conditioning that's part of the 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 thought behind that is exactly that that conditioning isn't fun and wrestling is the hardest sport there is and so if you're not having fun it's not worth it it's too much work it is too hard and if you're not having fun then you 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 cannot succeed and so i have typically uh I can be intense and so I will have coaches that I will just tell them you're my fun meter. If I get too far gone or if we're doing this too long, your job is to come tell me, let's move on. And you know, and so I have some coaches that that's been their job for years is to come up and and uh you know, to kind of reel me in and because I I guess I recognize that in myself that uh that it, it I can I can push as much as as anybody can can take and so but that's not that's not fun <laughs> <laughs> and uh I had coaches in the past who uh were horrible that way and it just takes the joy out of the sport and so I really try to push them as hard as I can I have had kids in my freestyle and greco program who have told me that, that we work harder than they do in their high school program and i hear that a lot but they also say but this is a lot more fun and so you know trying to to if nothing else then uh i i try to smile i try to use humor uh you got kids that you figure out pretty quickly that uh they've got a, a good sense of humor or they're a good sport and you can you know you can give them a little ribbing that then lightens the atmosphere and you know that they can they can take it and d- give it back and and a lot of that to try and make it to where even though you're you're really working very very hard that it's not torture true true uh, and and I'm really curious you know of all the uh, of all the years of coaching have you ever come r- come across a, a, a student or a, a wrestler you know whom you were coaching uh, who really had a troubled life you know was always getting into trouble and you know what I mean mm-hmm. and uh, were you able to sort of turn around the kid's life uh, you know to create a wrestler out of that person and you know keeping out of all the trouble uh, have you come across such an experience Yeah, I've had several wrestlers that were in very rough situations that either uh economically they were from an area that uh was very um economically challenged and one of those kids uh I started coaching him when he was 13 and the you know all this stuff you you have to even though we're we are a non-profit organization you have expenses and so you have to charge fees to cover some of this this stuff and and he told me that uh if his parents were not involved he came on his own he got a ride with somebody else and uh he just told me that if i can work out like a payment plan then he will pay his his registration Well, and I was like, okay, cuz he wasn't the first one to to bring that up. What I found out later was that he was going out and mowing lawns to earn the money to pay his fees. So he'd be out mowing the lawns in blazing heat and then come to practice and also give the program the money that he earned mowing those lawns. And that's what he did for the fees for the club, for the fees for the tournaments, and he really did lift himself out of a very tough situation and was successful in school and ended up going to college and being on the wrestling team in college 
and he was uh well i just have so much respect for yeah. for this kid i think that's and, an amazing transformation you know going to the college and making something in his life and uh, that that's indeed an amazing transformation and i think you as a coach uh must be given equal credit and uh, really congratulations for such a transformation that you were able to bring about such a positive change in the kid and uh, i think that sort of uh, what is kind of highlight of being a coach you are making a difference uh, you know as a teacher as a coach uh, right great thank you so much for sharing that bill and and finally uh, what would be that one message that you would like to share with uh, you know those young and aspiring athletes or professionals who are looking towards uh, becoming a sporting coach well the one thing is especially in a sport like wrestling you have to remember it's a game and yes you might be depending on wrestling to get a college scholarship there's a lot of things that that can be a, a great burden and why you're doing it but the bottom line is that it's a game and it's not worth uh it's not worth having it ruin other things in life and i deal a lot with you know wrestling is intense and dealing with parents and intervening between parents and their kids when uh things get out of hand i i i have and i will do that and the thing is is that it's not worth in that case it's not worth ruining your relationship with a parent or with a child it's a game and that is uh that that's one of the most important things that i i try to teach both the the athletes and their parents uh earlier on you said that if you don't enjoy it you will not be able to do it and i i think if you're only doing it to get a job only doing it to get good college education then i don't think so it's going to mean anything and uh maybe uh, do you think that, that is the job of a coach to make sure you know this point is drilled deep into their psyche and make sure they are very clear about the outcome uh, you know that this is not just for college education this is not just for a job but this is a career this is passion well, yeah. is that something a coach has to deal with absolutely that it uh it can be if and again the i keep coming back to that it has to be fun mm -hmm. you you can't get passionate about it if you're not having fun doing it and i think that's so true about everything in life right phil uh, you know if you don't love your job if you don't love what you're doing you will never enjoy it getting up morning will be very difficult going to the job is going to be pretty heavy every right. day you know you will not enjoy it and and if you don't like it uh, you will feel bad for yourself and then same thing is in sports i guess yeah yeah absolutely yeah. you have to enjoy it true true and i i think that's a message both for the coaches and sportsmen and athletes if you can't enjoy it if you're doing just for the heck of it you know if there there's an ulterior motive which goes beyond that sport you know through wrestling or through this i'll achieve this then i think there is something wrong and you need to reevaluate your priorities and maybe pick up a different career maybe give up that sport <laughs> yeah yeah right truly amazing how much a good coach can influence not just the sporting skills or the style of an athlete or in your case a wrestler but how much influence can uh, or rather the positive influence they can have on an athlete's personal life as well and that's really remarkable about being a coach i would like to quote ara persegian over here uh, you know a good coach will make his players see what they can be rather than what they are bill you are truly an amazing coach and uh, it was an honor to have you back on the podcast and uh, i really learned a lot about coaching from you and i hope the listeners have also learned a lot and they've also enjoyed our conversation thank you so much for taking time out to be on the podcast bill well i i appreciate you inviting me this again i've uh, enjoyed talking to you
right thank you so much bill uh, so guys that was uh, bill kilpack aka wd kilpack the third author communication professor and nationally recognized wrestling coach from salt lake city utah thank you so much for listening to us have a great day